to get all of our content on the go on your mobile device, go to the Android Market or Apple App Store and search for War Room Sports and download our mobile app. War Room Sports is brought to you by Audible.com. Download a free audio book of your choice by going to audibletrial.com slash warroomsports. Many. Uh, Kyle Sefchik. Kyle, you on the line? I'm on the line, man. What's up? I'm good. How are you? This is Devin. I'm great. Hi, Kyle, what's Hi, up? Bro. This is B. Austin. Welcome what's to the up, man. Well, yeah, thank you, Brad. There's five of us, so you're at the round table with us tonight. So we're going to talk to you for a few uh, minutes. We know you got some things to do tonight. <clears throat> so we'll get right into it. Um, yeah, no problem. Yeah, basically, I mean, just tell our audience, how you get started, how did you get started in MMA? Because, you know, it's it's a brutal sport. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people out there are wondering <laughs> what kind of a dude you got to be to to want to be an MMA fighter. So how did you, how'd you get started? Well, uh, personally, <clears throat> um, starting out, I had no intentions of ever becoming an MMA fighter, let alone even a fighter. I didn't even like to fight, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I guess you could say... <laughs> you know, but uh, what, 17 years old, so seven years ago, I'm 24 now, um, getting out of high school, you know, trying to map out the rest of my life, uh, decide I want to get, you know, maybe go into the police force, maybe do some college, go to the police force, maybe do some FBI. So uh, what I uh, did was I decided to take this martial art, art called Krav Maga, K-R-A-V-M-A-G-A. And what it, what it is, it stands for Contact Combat, and it's an uh, Israeli sort of, uh, source of uh, self-defense. And uh, what I wanted to do was just do this so I can learn some things, you know, that will help uh, uh, better my chances of getting into the police force, better my chances of uh, handling the academies and stuff like that. So in no way did I ever want to become an MMA artist, but um, it eventually evolved into me being uh, picking up these uh, Krav Maga pretty fast, and eventually these schools wanted to sponsor me in Muay Thai and boxing and jiu-jitsu and basically took me under their wing from there. And uh, since I was so young at the time, I mean, remember at the time, the MMA – was not it was just evolving. It wasn't like a young person's sport to get into and stuff. So they uh seventeen, eighteen years old, they were just, you know, sponsoring me and uh letting me train, you know, four hours a night in this and get lost in this art. And uh, eventually come uh you know, a few years ago I had my first MMA fight and before I knew it I was pro. Wow. Wow. That's okay. crazy because, you know, I'm I'm from Philly and growing <laughs> up I fought a lot. <laughs> Now right. I'm trying not to fight, so you know. Take... <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was, I was a kid saying, "Oh man, fighting is terrible." I, even at 18, 19 years old, when I was already in this stuff, I was watching MMA on TV. Like, how can guys do this? This is terrible. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey uh, Kyle, this is Akil. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. I appreciate it. And uh, I have a question for you. Uh, and I know, and you yeah. kind of answered it uh, recently. But uh, what are your fighting disciplines? I know you mentioned Krav Magna, but do you incorporate any sure. other fighting disciplines? Yeah, Ooh. absolutely. My main disciplines now, you know, Krav Maga is basically what I started with, and I always have it in my roots. But uh, my my main um, disciplines now is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is, uh, you know, uh, ground fighting. It's basically submissions wrestling on the ground. Um, it, it's you know, it's, like I just said, it's, it's wrestling with submissions. Um, and my other form is, uh, uh, stand-up wise, is Muay Thai. I've had some boxing, uh, been coached in boxing in the past, but Muay Thai, Muay Thai deals, you know, with the knees and the kicks and the elbows more, a more of a, a defined way to get things done fast. And uh, so I'm very even in both aspects, stand-up and ground, and lucky to be like that. Okay. So, Kyle, but, this is PJ. Um Quick question for you. What weight class do you fight in, I guess, primarily? <clears throat> primarily is the uh, weight class I fight in is 170 welterweight. Uh, I fought two um, title matches at 185. Nobody would take the fights against these guys. They were monsters. And, you know, I would be, you know, they'd call me two weeks, a week before the fight, and I'd say, sure, you know what I mean? But uh, uh, I fought at 185 before. Those are much bigger guys, definitely not my uh, cup of tea, but 170 is my ideal um, weight class. That's what I compete in jiu-jitsu at, Muay Thai and all the other MMA fights. Oh, you sound like a, a thrill seeker, man. <laughs> oh, like, that's, sure, that's, 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 that's really what it is. Kyle, what's going on? This is Jimmy. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you in the war room. I'm a huge MMA fan. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, 
Yeah, I have a question for you, though. Uh, speaking of that, you know, I watch a lot of fighters. I want to know who have you trained with uh, in terms of other MMA fighters or even other athletes? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Um, well, the first, I mean, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of, uh, well, obviously you have, but uh, the first person, the big big name I ever got to train with was actually one of the people who started the UFC, and that's Hoyce Gracie. My first blue belt was wow. given to me by Hoyce Yeah, my Whoa. blue belt you just, was given to me personally by Hoyce Gracie. Um, wow. And then I've I trained with guys like uh, Boss Rutten, BJ Penn, Sean Shirk, Uriah Faber, Aaron Riley, uh, Henzo Gracie, Pedro Sauer. Um, so I've gotten a good, uh, you know, round, Jeez. you know, good feel of all types of people. I've never been stuck to a certain school, so I've always been gotcha. able to get different people of all different kinds of instructors and fighters, and I'm very fortunate, you know. Let me ask you a question. That's I don't know you his name. Who do you think is the toughest? <laughs> Who is the toughest? All right, I'll tell you the toughest. The cr- the craziest is Boss Rutten. Um, those of you who don't know who Boss Rutten is, he's a Dutch. He's a Dutch guy. He's bald and he's just ruthless. And actually, he's a black belt in Krav Maga, and he's just a crazy guy. Like he's the kind of guy that uh, you get hurt training with, whether you want to or not. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know mean, he's so, even crazy. On, he's even crazy on TV. The uh, the show he was hosting, an MMA show. He's like something's wrong with him. Yeah, oh, yeah, he just, he, he's just one of those guys that just, he, he, he's just one of those guys, man, just crazy. But uh, he's definitely the craziest and uh, most uh, ruthless guy I've ever trained with. Everybody else seems to be pretty uh, chill and, you know, and but all good in their own ways. And by the way, That's real quick, we have a question. We have a question. I'm sorry, Brad, I'm going to cut you off. We have a question in the chat room for you. Um, do you have any uh, family? Are you related to uh, Kevin uh, Sefcik? Uh, he played for the Phillies. From like ninety five to uh, yeah, I've, been, I've been asked that before, and no, um, we are not. We are not actually related. Uh, maybe, maybe long roots we are, but definitely uh, we are. have never been in contact now. Got you. All right, go ahead, Austin. I'm sorry. Yeah, hey, you right. just ran. You just ran down a list of ass whooping, man. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> very impressive <laughs> name. Oh, I really do. <laughs> yeah, so my my question for you is what what other organized sports have kind of held your interest? Were you engaged in any any other any other organized sports coming up? And what are your what are oh, some of your other interests as well going beyond sports if you could tell us a little bit? Yeah, um well Growing up, I actually played sports my whole life. You know, I got started at age four in baseball, and then all of a sudden football at six and seven and uh, and basketball, and basically played football, basketball, and baseball, you know, religiously till you know, all the way up to college. Um, I actually played college baseball, but this was also the same time I got into uh, mixed martial arts, and I was like, all right, this is, the, you know, the art for me. But uh, I played sports my whole life. There was never a season I had off. Like, literally, there was never – there was never a season I had off, and uh, I think sports actually played a big impact in the way I handled mixed martial arts and all the different things. You know, I took things from each sport and was able to convert it to MMA, you know? But what skills would you say you've been able to transfer? Uh, um, let's say, uh, let's say, throughout my, my let's just, for example, I, I'm very, uh, my striking, I'm very quick with my hands. I, let's, let's look at my right hand. You know, I played baseball my whole life. So into baseball, you know, you have to have good uh, mechanics and stuff. Same thing came into uh, step when, you know, I entered a ring. You know, I, I have to be able to, you know, strike fast, just like throwing a ball fast. Um, look at uh, endurance-wise, you know, playing basketball, run up and down a court. Look at the contact in football, um, how to tackle. You know, it takes it. You know, that's kind of what you're doing sometimes when you're wrestling in the ring, you know. Right. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, uh, this is Devin again, Kyle. Um, we hear that you're you're basically into a little bit of everything. You basically get your hustle on. You get your grind on. Entertainment, yeah, training, opening the school. Tell us, tell us some of the other things that you have going on outside of the octagon. Outside of Octagon, um, other than, you know, instructing and stuff, I, uh, I actually own a company called KSF Entertainment. It uh, deals with, you know, DJs and bands and stuff like that. We do all types of events, you know. Like last week I was DJing in, in D.C. at Ultra Bar, you know, one of the top clubs in D.C., doing stuff like that, um, also putting on, like, charity events. We had 700 people at this basically charity rave we threw the other day um, about last month, and we had 700 people show up, you know, stuff like that. Um so aside from that, I also am partners in uh, this um, training company called Give Results Trainers. Now with this, we do like personal training and boot camps, just fun stuff, you know, it, whether it's one-on-one training or, like I said, boot camps, all ages. 
Um, so I stay active with that. But the most recent thing um, I'm excited about is we're going to be opening up a new school in Damascus. And what I mean by school, not like a uh, – education-wise school, uh, MMA and sports school. It's going to be MMA-based, but also sport-based, you know, sports-specific. You know, if a kid wants to come in for football training lessons, you know, we, we have that. We have – we're going to have all the, you know, the uh, arts, like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, Krav Maga, boxing. We're going to have all that stuff at the school to offer, even even Zumba. I'm sure you guys heard of Zumba for, you know, a lot of yeah. stuff yeah. that women are doing. We're going to have everything possible at the school so if people come in – they say, instead of saying, why should I join, they say, why not? You know, why wouldn't I join? Right. So we're really excited about this. We're talking with two big uh, big uh, venues, right, not venues, but big buildings right now that are interested in uh, taking us in. So once we decide, it's going to be good to go. Yeah, that, that's a really good idea. I mean, when you get everything started and up and running, just give us a call, and we'll try to, you know, help you get that out to our fans. We have a uh, – you know, we have a lot of fans in the in the D.C., Maryland area. We're big in Philly. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. And you guys will be coming we'll in. You guys will be coming in, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Guys, I need to get, we, I I need to get back in shape. I'm, I'm sitting here behind <laughs> oh. the microphone for too long. So. I worked out with an MMA fighter one time, and I think I stopped going to the gym after that because <laughs> you guys don't play. Yo, yeah. You guys don't play no games when you, when, you know, when you're training. Y- y'all play no uh, games. No, it's, yeah, it, it's it's basically what I love about this sport MMA is it really is both physically and mentally the best thing you could like the hardest thing you have to push yourself to in both aspects. You can be in great shape, but you also have to be you know mentally prepared for everything at stake. You know what I mean? The training that goes into it, pushing it till I mean it's something that anybody can develop, but it really takes a lot. You know. Yeah, even with, like, boxers, when you guys try to cut weight, that's, like, the craziest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. actually, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting weight right now. As we speak, my mouth is a little dry because uh, I can't drink water. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you have to teach me how to cut weight. I got a lot of weight to cut. Oh, I, I will. There's some good, there's some good drinks. Now, yeah. now, you'll be mad because you'll be smelling things better than usual. Like, you'll smell McDonald's from, like, two miles away, you know? You're hungry as hell. Huh? <laughs> like, a, like a grizzly bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, no, no, but it, it yeah, it, it's definitely all worth it in the end, you know. Yeah, hey, can you guys is, imagine Kyle like uh, DJing at a club in DC, and you know something break out, get a little raunchy in there? <laughs> you think he'd be able to? Uh, it, 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 be able you know, to get out of line. Before, and I yeah, yeah, somebody get out of line. You can that. check that. <laughs> you that haven't had that guys? happen yet, have you? Oh, it can happened you, twice. Oh, you had to step oh. from behind the, the DJ table? And, yeah, yeah, well, you had to show me well, a special set of skills. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's not like I go out there and just start, and start like, you know, wrecking people. It's more of like, you know, uh, subdue, I guess you want to say, the situation, like with a rear naked joke and then hand it over. Basically, just hem somebody up. Like, let's, wow. Let's, let's, let's chill. Go ahead, PJ. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You, you can imagine me stage diving and just wrecking the people fighting or something. That's worse. I'll give that's worse. I was going to say, yeah, instead of like beating somebody up, instead of beating somebody up and knocking them out, you just like holding them like, look, man, just just stop. Just, <laughs> just stop. Yeah. <laughs> just stop. Yeah. Exactly. Tell them, look, I got a exactly. special set of skills that yeah, and, will and the girl, uh, bodily uh, harm you. It's funny you... uh. It's funny you mention that because the uh, one of our, our co-hosts, I'm not going to mention their name, but you know they got into a scrum at one time when we were all in college, and he was able to physically uh, destroy a certain athletic team single-handedly. Maybe right. y'all can compare notes uh, off off the uh, off the air. Uh, yeah, the I, I was gonna, special I was set of skills, add, street special, skills. Yeah, special special set of skills. So you're like, listen, dude, don't cross that line. Cross that line. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, uh, but, uh, right. No, exactly. It's it's more about just, you know, calming people down more than anything. Why, you know, it's throw things and make things worse. Right, right. But let's talk about Saturday's event, uh, Kyle. We know that this is your pro debut. Um, but what was your win loss record as an amateur? 
Well, it would be it would be if you took out all the matches. It would be six and zero. Oh, but the last fight I had, I fought in uh, North Carolina uh, in July, and uh, it was supposed to be pro. You know, I showed up there. It was pro. I had all my stuff filled out. But in the end, after the fight, some things didn't go through, and like things weren't between me and my opponent. They weren't processed right as a pro. So we were ended up getting uh, an amateur match marked down. So six and one, I guess you can say, as amateur. So that's that's basically a six and one amateur. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Pretty good. No, before I get my question, we have another question from our fans in the chat room. Uh, Tia Naomi, she wants to know, what uh, what do you physically and mentally do to prepare for fights? Because it's both a physical and a mental sport. So what kind of uh, training do you have leading up to your fights? And also mentally, how do you prepare? Oh, uh, Okay, well, physically... Obviously, it's the training. It's um, it's not just spending time on the mat, meaning it's not just I go in there and spar and grapple. It's also taking the time to train with, you know, like these other guys that I've known all around the DMV area that are, I want to say, you know, still better than me. They, they, you know, these are the older guys that have been around for years and years. And it's training technique with them, you know, not just always going hard, 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 hard. It's, you know, getting that, you know, getting the uh, uh, mental reps, you want to say. So I do that. But aside from that, like, what people need to, what people in the sport need to do is because it can really stress you out, not just stress you out, but it can burn you out. So what I do is twice a week is I'm very, uh, I love to rock climb. It just clears my mind. I go and it's still physical and it helps me impart to my game. You know what I mean? And like on Monday nights, I'll go play basketball for cardio and just have a lot of fun for that hour and a half. So physically, I just switch up all kinds of things. You know what I mean? Whether it's the track, yeah. basketball, MMA, boxing, it's just always staying busy in something but enjoying it because the moment you stop enjoying it you shouldn't be doing it so that's yeah. physically and, then, yeah. and mentally mentally is i mean that's that's the key aspect it's like like leading up to the fight like you know there's there's so many nerves and so many feelings that add up like uh you know you're stressed you're nervous you're excited but you're you know you don't you don't let people down you know there's so much that goes into it all you can really do is just take a deep breath and just understand at the end of the day like what i tell myself is hey life's good at the end of the day no matter what just go in there and do what you train you know what i mean you're you're capable of doing this obviously go in there do what you have to do and win or lose you come out and you go back to a great life so mentally that's how i you know prepare and also i'm a very strong christian myself so I'm very big, you know, into, into prayer and stuff like that. I know at the end of the day, okay. God's got my back. Right. Let me ask you a question. Uh, um, do you think that the mental part is more difficult than the physical part? I really do because I believe the physical part itself has to do with your mental process. So um, I think at the end of the day, you know, our minds is really what dictates everything. So physically, you know, when I'm dying and I can't go another second, it's my mind that says, hey, do this one more second. Do not give up right now. At the end of the day, it's it's, it's going to be my mind over anything that wins this fight. Okay, I had a, I don't have my own question for you, but our chat room has a lot of uh, dialogue for you. <laughs> um, they want to know um, the the fight last week with the UFC. Uh, did you watch it? And do you think that it was it was stopped early, or what do you think about the overall fight? I uh, I did not watch it, but I watched the recap. And from the get go, even before the fight, I personally I. Even Dana White will admit to you guys, or will admit, will admit, and he did. It was that he was nervous about it because they had an hour-long block, I believe, on Fox, right? right. Yeah. And he was nervous that they they should have had more. First of all, the fight itself, they wanted it to go longer. They wanted it to be this big thing with you know uh, Kane and him. He most likely should have won. Blah 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 blah. And I believe that. Um, they didn't. They sh- in terms of business-wise, they should have had a lot more people on the card. In terms of the fight itself, uh, I wasn't surprised. I mean, this is uh, MMA is so is is great. At, people are gonna win. People are gonna lose. At the end of the day, it's a fight. Anybody can get caught in anything, and that's honestly what's so great about about the art itself. So yeah, I thought it was awesome. I like. I love underdog. I mean, that's what I like to fight as. I love fighting as an underdog myself. So when underdog wins, I, I, I love it and don't and, it's, and you know I, I'm not surprised it happened. You know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. Now, I mean, now I can finally get to my question. And get I don't know. We got another one, Jim. <laughs> we got a oh, we got another question one? on oh, Facebook. Our chat, our chat room, our chat room is loving you, huh? This one is a uh, Facebook. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Kevin Lang on Facebook. He says, uh, "When do you think that uh, the disparity between boxing paydays and MMA paydays will be comparable?" You know that that's a that's a very good question because, uh, but like people don't know this, but or I guess people do, but boxing paydays are so much more than UFC fighters these days. Would you guys agree? Yeah, 
Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, they've had, like, a, how many years sure head start? Were, <laughs> I just make sure we're on the same page. Um, now, I think, I mean, I've been always been a fan of boxing, but uh, I do love MMA more. And I think that boxing, you know, it's, it's, it really has, you know, started to take the uh, back end of the MMA. You know, it's starting to get be, be in the shadows of MMA. The thing is, there's not there's, – there's plenty of boxers in the world, but there's only – in my mind, there's like only a, a couple key, you know, like the Pacquiao's and the Mayweather's that are able to really, you know, keep the boxing going. So their PDs are so much more because of that. They'll bring the people there. Um, as far as the MMA, it's, it's developing. People aren't just joining gyms for boxing right now. They're joining MMA gyms for everything. So, honestly, I, I see it. There's going to be a lot more MMA fighters, you know, especially in the amateur field, and it's going to keep going and going and build up for more and more pros. And, um I just don't see it happening in terms of unless unless it's the George St. Pierre's versus Anderson Silva's, you know, these big day, paydays paying off for the, yeah. you know, the next five years. But eventually, I think MMA will over will take honestly will put boxing kind of in the back burner forever. I hate to say it, but that's when the big paydays will happen. That's when it's like the best two in the world in anything possible, and that's when the big money will come in. Right. Yeah, Kyle, I actually looked into this before and, like, did some research, and, and the, the biggest problem is the structure of the sports. Boxing has so many promoters, and they don't have a, a, a major entity, say, uh, like a UFC, uh, so to speak, uh, to put on fights. So that's why it's always top-heavy in terms of the card. You'll get one great fight, and the bottom fights suck because the guys at the top are, are clogging up the money, and the promoters, you know, don't want to put their fighters on an undercard not making any money. So it, it's kind of the way the sports are structured as well. Um, oh, you're, you're, absolutely, that, you're, you're absolutely right. At the end of the day, some of the, uh, uh, this is a lot of business involved in the back burners, you know? Yeah, and you just brought so, up two names, and I, I still didn't get to my question yet. Um, <laughs> you guys hear something right? No, no, you're good now. You take it, you okay, I'm good, I'm good now. You, you just brought up Anderson Silva and GSP. If they fought, who do you think will win? This is a question I didn't even have planned to ask you, but you brought it up. I would, I mean, uh, honestly, if, if I had to pick somebody to win, it would be George St. Pierre. Um, now, like, I, if you were to ask me all about all types of fighters, I would you might know more than I would. I'm more of, you know, into the training and stuff. I, I watch yeah. some, I know who the big guys are, but I don't know all these fighters. I don't I don't really care. And I mean I'm not gonna be mean to say I really don't care. Because you're a fighter. Yeah, there's people there's people I respect and like George St. Pierre would be one of them. He's actually on the top of my list to, you know, go train with and I eventually will. But um he he he's not just good uh, uh, physically and mentally in the sport of MMA, he's a good person as well. I'm a big fan of that. So I think that, in the long run, would take him farther than you know the Anderson Silva, who recently, you know, let, this this past year got in trouble for certain things he he said and done. You know, just being cocky and rude and stuff for the sport. So I would definitely go with George St. Pierre in that fight. Okay, good. Cool. All right, now my fi- now back to the question. Getting back to your fight. <laughs> Getting back to your yeah. fight. What do you know about your opponent that you are fighting Saturday night? Uh, I believe his name is Mario Martinez, correct? Yes, his name is Mario Martinez. He's 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 out of California. He's a uh, um, a military guy, so all I have is respect for him. I mean, anybody who serves in the military, it's definitely awesome. And you know that you know these military, especially from uh, clips I've seen of him. You know, we study each other. You know, study film and stuff. So I've watched some stuff on him, and he's a fighter. You know, he goes till the end. He won't give up. So I know that. He is not just, you know, in our country, but he doesn't give up, and he, he works hard, he trains hard. So I know that about him. I know he's very strong with his hands. Like, he's very talented with his hands. His last fight, he's asked, his last fight he got a knockout. He is undefeated. He's never lost. So I love that aspect of it. He hasn't, he hasn't tasted loss yet, but I'm sure he doesn't want to, so I know he'll go you know, as hard <laughs> as he can. So he, um, okay, cool. he, this, but what I'm happy about is this guy's going to be kind of the same. In my last two fights, I fought up guys that were weighing 20 pounds heavier than me at fight night. He'll be the same weight as me, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Okay, okay. Hey, uh, Kyle, this is uh, Akil again. Uh, who's promoting Saturday's event? Uh, the promotions are going to be going through One World MMA. They're putting on um, they're putting on the big uh, event. Like it's called One World MMA, and uh, they have their own website, OneWorldMMA.com, and they uh, put on a lot of pro venues and bring it a lot more to the East Coast. They're actually going to be doing one that they invited to me already to compete in next year in Brazil. So they're they're spanning out. So you'll hear a lot from them. Um, they do have you know links to the UFC and stuff like that. I mean, pro is pro at the end of the day. You know, I can be fighting, you know, George St. Pierre in 2012 if things happen. You know what I mean? So 
But um, one World MMA, and they uh, they do great. And uh, I'm looking forward to they put on a great show. You know, not just you know with, not just putting on great people on the card, but also um, you know that they they people come, people fill seats. Um, they they have a great you know show there, sound, everything you possibly think of. Cool. Okay. Okay. Amen. Child, we enjoyed you. Uh, you know, we got to get all our guests out of here on a on a question or two. Um, so I want to know, and 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 and, your, and the fans want to know, what is your favorite sport outside of your own, and who do you root for on uh, you know, Monday night, Sunday, Saturdays? Who who are your squads? <laughs> all right, so my favorite sport. That's a good question. Um, I. Uh, if you asked me a few years ago, I would have said football and the Redskins. Um, but lately, that's just because, of, you know, I love up in contact, and I was growing in, in the Redskins, you know, liking the Redskins. But uh, now uh, I would have to say it would be hockey. I mean, I love the fact that it's always fast to play. It's um, – Great contact, great speed, like I said, and the fact that they can, you know, fight in it is awesome. They could, they could, they could put their gloves down. They could say, all right, all right, man to man, man to man on the ice right now. Let's go. And then you know what? At the end, they both go to the penalty box, and the, the show goes on. It's not, it's not like they're fine or anything like that. Um, but I would have to definitely go with the Capitals. You know, um, that's really the uh, they're, they're a good team, um, and uh, that's what I have to go with: hockey and Capitals right now. Okay, a man after my own heart, a hometowner. Yeah, All right, well, exactly. every, everybody out there, if you want to see Kyle fight this Saturday, if you're in the Washington, D.C. area, um, he'll be fighting the One World MMA Presents the D.C. Pro Fights. It's Saturday, November 19th. The fights start around 6.30. Um, it's the D.C. Convention Center, if you don't know where that is, that's 801 Mount Vernon Place, northwest Washington, D.C. Um, come on out. Go to the uh, One World MMA website and and get the ticket information. Kyle, we will be in the – about two of us will be there, but we'll have about four or five people with us rooting you on. Um, we hear that, you know, your section is trying to get a white out going, so we'll have our white shirts on, and we'll be there, there rooting you for you, man. So, so well, I, oh, I, I appreciate it, man. I promise you this. Mm-hmm. I'll fight my heart out. I'll fight to the very end and leave all the training in there and – uh I will uh, represent us very well on this uh, East Coast and the DMV area. Okay. Mario, so we... Kyle is coming to knock you out. <laughs> Who said All right, that? so Who said uh, we'll see you on Saturday, and it was great to have you on. We hope to have Thanks, you back. Kyle. Well, I, I appreciate it, guys. It was a lot of fun. All right. Take care. All right. We'll we'll have All right. See you. <laughs> The wait, it's the war room with five nights at the round table, five Philly guys diversified and educated.